Moving into number 10, we have old green eyes. I've heard of headless ghosts, but a floating set of eyes? That's pretty new to me. So Tennessee was an area of tension during the Civil War, and one particularly bloody battle in the state was fought at, I'm gonna try and pronounce it, Chickamauga. Did I get that right? Let me know, Tennessee. The battlefield is now a national park, however, if you are wandering around and think you spot a pair of green eyes peeping at you, turns out you might not be crazy. It seems that the voyeur is a Confederate soldier who met his end in the field. His body was never found, just his head, and now all that remains are his glowing green eyes. Now they're constantly watching over the field and looking out for his body. Coming in at number nine, we have the candy lady. Who loves candy? I love candy. Get me a dip and down and a strawberry lace. Whether we have to say the candy lady of Texas is enough to make me give up caramels for life, which is a shame because caramel's such a dream. So the candy lady is said to have been a woman called Clara Crane. She lived in Texas around the turn of the 20th century. She was said to have been married to an older man and the pair had a child called Marcella. Sadly, Marcella was killed in a freak accident and Clara blamed her husband and then went mad, reportedly killing him with poisoned caramel. She was then taken to North Texas Lunatic Asylum but released a few years later. This is when candy started showing up on windowsills, luring in kids. Later, a number of kids across the state went missing, and one farmer was said to have found rotten children's teeth in a caramel wrapper on his land. The urban legend goes that the candy lady will start by leaving a kid candy to win their trust. Then, she'll abduct them and stab them with a fork. I shouldn't laugh, but forks are kind of like the comedy side of utensils, right? From candy lady to donkey lady at number eight. Don Donkey Lady, now I've heard it all. Apparently, ye olde Donkey Lady haunts a bridge over Elm Creek in San Antonio, Texas. The origin story of the ghost dates back almost 200 years to the mid 1800s. When settlers were living on the banks of Elm Creek, a husband and wife had a small wooden farmhouse and were making a living with a small number of livestock. One day, one of their donkeys or mules was grazing in the area when a young man from the town came across it. This man was not a nice man, but he was a wealthy man. He was the son of an important town leader. The young man teased the donkey and hit it with a stick, to which the donkey fairly responded by biting him. I'd bite someone if they hit me with a stick too. Retaliating, the man started heavily beating the donkey. Hearing their mule being attacked, the couple emerged and told the man to get away, throwing rocks at him for hurting their valuable animal. The man had a bit of Prince Joffrey entitlement moment, and he screamed that his father would hear about this, and to be honest, hear about it he did. He brought a bunch of friends to the farmhouse to torture the place. When the husband intervened, he was shot, as were his sons. The wife's dress caught fire and she helplessly watched her loved ones die. As she was engulfed in flames, she screamed running down the road. She began to burn as she threw herself into the creek. Her body was never found, but her wails are said to still be heard along the stretch of the road. If a car stops for too long, it is said that she appears screaming with her arms outstretched on the bridge. Some even report a body falling on the bonnet of the car, but when they stop, there's nothing there. Coming into number seven, we have Arlington Screaming Bridge slash Hell's Gate. According to many Texans, going down the Arlington Screaming Bridge and listening out for the shrieks of the dead is some kind of local rite of passage. On a winter's night in 1961, a car full of six Arlington teenage girls fell off a burned out wooden bridge and onto the rail tracks next to a creek. This creek had a little bridge over it that's still there today. Now the driver didn't realize that the bridge was out, drove over it, crashed. Three of the girls died as a result of the impact impact, one suffered a brain injury and two others were injured. Those responsible for burning the bridge were four boys who went to the same high school as the girls, resulting in a big local scandal and tragedy. The bridge over the creek still stands and people refer to it as the Screaming Bridge in memory of the girls who died. The spot near the bridge may also be cursed. In 1994, two people were killed in a truck when the driver tried to outrace a train at the crossing. Curse or just idiocy? I don't know. Coming into number six, we have the White Lady of Rio Frio. So the Frio River is a beautiful spot near Rio Frio in Texas. On a summer's day, you may see picnickers hanging out by the water, enjoying the weather, but some say they've had a far spookier experience. Many people that visit the Frio River have reported a strange white mist hovering over the water. Some say it's a strange microclimate, but others cite the story of the Lady of Frio. The story goes that back in the 1900s, a young girl called Maria Juarez was the prettiest girl in the canyon. She was young and had an elder sister whom she loved deeply. Her 
used to have children with a man called Gregorio, who unfortunately cared more about Maria than a sister in law. Maria helped raise her sister's children and dreamed that someday she would meet someone, marry them, and have kids of her very own. She thought all of her dreams had come true when she met Anselmo, a dashing young man who seemed to return her affections. Sadly, this angered Gregorio, who told Maria that he loved her and wanted to be with her. When she rebuffed him because of her sister and Anselmo, he shot her through the heart by the lake. Now, her spirit is said to haunt the spot to this day. Adding a level of legitimacy to the story, there is an unmarked grave in a Frio cemetery said to belong to Maria, the white lady who died an unmarried virgin. Coming into number five, we have El Muerto. The El Muerto tale is truly terrifying. Back during the gold rush era, people thought that there was gold to be found in Texas. On top of that, the USA Mexico border was hotly contested around this area, with an area of no man's land between the two countries. In this area, bandits were rife and Texas rangers were around to keep them in check. One ranger, William Bigfoot Wallace, wanted to teach the bandits a lesson after one persistent criminal, known simply as Vidal, stole a bunch of Mustang horses. When he was in court, Bigfoot Wallace and his ranger friends chopped off Vidal's head, sat his body on a horse, attached his hands to the reins, and strung his head to the saddle. This was supposed to teach other would be bandits a lesson not to mess with the Texas rangers. Some poor sod then had to deal with finding the horse and its deceased cargo, which would be absolutely awful. Despite eventually being taken down from the horse, legend has it that Vidal rides on through the Rio Grande area today, and his ghost is dubbed as El Muerto. Coming into number four, we have the dancing devil of El Cameroncito. A dancing Texas urban legend. I am so down for this. Apparently, the dancing devil is local only to El Cameroncito, so ladies of other towns, no worries if a man is asking you to dance, you're probably safe. Ladies in Cameroncito, though, watch out. So basically, a legend has it that in the 1970s, a man in a dapper suit would ask beautiful ladies to dance with him. While they didn't find him beautiful, they felt compelled to dance. As he danced, women would be swept up. One day, a woman noticed the man she was dancing with had hooves for feet and that everyone near them was staring in horror. Realizing she was dancing with the devil, she ran away. The devil, however, remained. Now, I always keep my demons in my dancing shoes. Coming into number three, we have Goatman. Goatman, 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 Goatman. Fun to say, fun to talk about. There are a couple of legends surrounding the Goatman of Old Alton Bridge in Denton County. The bridge is locally dubbed Goatman's Bridge, and some say that is because there is a goat like demon that haunts the nearby forest. But others turn to a more elaborate tale of a local goat farmer. Oscar Washburn was a black goat farmer who was known for being an honest businessman, and he was a well liked member of the community. Unfortunately, a successful black man caught the attention of the KKK, who was said to have abducted him in August 1938. Reportedly, they tied a noose around his neck and threw him over the old Alton Bridge into the river below. When they went to bring up his body, they found that the noose was empty. Frustrated, the clan went to his house and slaughtered his wife and children. Washburn's body was never found, but a lot of paranormal enthusiasts will tell you that if you drive out over the bridge at night without your headlights on, the old goat man will be standing on the other side to greet you. Some also report being touched or grabbed by a spirit, and others say there are weird flashing lights in the nearby forest. Coming into number two, we have the ghost of Fort Phantom Hill. Fort Phantom is one of the most well preserved historic sites in Texas, with original architecture dating back to the mid 1850s. Fort Phantom was built as a safe stop for immigrants headed to the Californian gold fields. The story behind the name of Phantom Hill seems to be twofold. On the one hand, the fort is said to look really high up on a plateau from afar, but when you get close, it looks level, so it disappears like a phantom. The other story is that one night, while a sentry was keeping watch, he fired on a Native American who was on the hill. When he went to go and investigate, he didn't find a body. When the team at the whole fort went out to look for a band of natives, they couldn't find any evidence of them ever being nearby. This ghost on the hill is said to reemerge every now and then, confusing those who watch from the garrison. Finally, coming into number one, we have one of the most well known Texas urban legends ever. We have the Houston Batman. So, first, I was like, Batman? Hell yes, get me there. But then I delved further into this legend and I realized that they don't mean like the superhero. No, no, no. The Houston Batman is also known as the Houston Horror and is a winged creature that has regularly been sighted in Houston, Texas. Now, this creature is a bit like the Mothman of the Mothman prophecies, and I don't like a big moth. The story of the winged menace dates back to 1953 when a woman and her neighbors were sitting on their porch in East 3rd Street, Houston. 23 year old housewife Hilda Walker said she looked up over the lawn and saw the 
shadow of a huge moth. When she looked up, she saw something huge then fly into a pecan tree. Her and her neighbours thought that the monster was around six and a half feet tall, although they weren't totally sure what they'd seen. Fourteen year old Judy Mayer, who was also sat on the porch, screamed in fear as she got a square on look at the monster. He was described as a man, but with wings, huge, huge wings, and a weird, strange yellow haze around him. Mrs. Walker reported the incident to the police and spoke to local news outlets. The Batman slash Mothman may have been spotted once again by Houston Bel Air theatre workers in the 1990s, and the legend lives on today. Some suspect a government cover up is at play, as vigilantes seeking the Batman discovered that some years after the initial incident, Mrs. Walker's neighbourhood was raised to make way for a new part of the interstate. Starting us off, number 10 is Suicide Bridge. Starting off strong, you know how I am. Built in 1912, the Pasadena, Colorado Street Bridge is a scenic drive. It's on a riverbed, it has lamps, there's an old charm about it that makes it romantic almost, but it's also the site of many atrocities. Over a hundred horrible suicides have taken place at the bridge that the bridge is actually called Suicide Bridge by most. It garnered such a reputation that in 1993 they installed a suicide barrier on the bridge to try and lower the numbers. The stories of the suicides are also very hard to digest. In 1937, Myrtle Ward took her three year old daughter to the bridge after her husband left her. She threw her daughter off the bridge and then leaped herself, but thankfully, her daughter landed in a few thick branches which slowed her descent and left her unharmed, but Myrtle plummeted to her death. Many have seen her ghost on the bridge and in the riverbed below, forever looking for her daughter. Another story is more recent, taking place in 2008, where a man stabbed and killed his wife and grandmother and then killed himself. And that was only two stories out of countless ones I could have told you. So of course, with that much death going on there, there are that many ghosts. Many spirits haunt the bridge, including a man wearing glasses and a woman that continuously keeps mimicking her fall off the bridge. Homeless people camping under the bridge have reported hearing eerie cries and sounds at night and the ghost of a man who whispers her fault to anyone that walks by. Obviously referring to whoever drove him to take his own life, but no one knows who he's talking about. Coming in at number 9, we have Skinned Tom. Sounds like a person I don't want to meet. Ah, Tom. Tom learned how savage love can be and he learned it the hard way. He learned it as his skin was being peeled off his body. Hip hip hurrah. Now let me explain. Back in the 1920s, a young man named Tom felt the first pricklings of love. He asked out a woman he had eyes for on a date, and she said yes. They took a trip to the aptly named Lover's Lane in East Tennessee, where the pair kissed, and more. Unbeknownst to poor Tom, his sweetheart was actually married. Her husband suspected his wife was cheating on him and tracked the pair down. When he found them lip locked, he killed his wife in a fit of rage. He then drowned dragged Tom from his car and skinned him alive right there on the road. Now legend has it that Tom can still be found on Lover's Lane, only as a bloodied and raw ghost carrying a knife. He's said to appear to lovers who are cheating on their significant others when they park up to smooch. Coming in at number 8, we have the White Screamer. In White Bluffs, Tennessee, you could come across something scary in the woods. It seems that urban legend has it that once upon a time a local couple had a child, only the child was hideously deformed. They locked what they saw as the abomination in the basement, feeding it daily but showing it no love. It grew. It grew some more. It grew and it grew until it was child no more and got so big and strong that it could escape into the woods. But before escaping, it killed its parents. Living feral and naked, the creature survived on pets and livestock. Indeed, locals have reported seeing a big white creature roaming the woods. Those who haven't seen it have often heard it. It seems that the creature screams a terrible high pitched wail into the night. Coming in at number 7, we have the Witch of Concord Cemetery. Concord Cemetery is one of the oldest cemeteries in Coffee County and is well known to be haunted by a number of ghosts. Now, the most famous is said to be Sadie Baker. Sadie was thought to have been burned at the stake by her community in the early 19th century for fear of being a witch. Honestly, how horrible. Now, in order to keep ill wishes from the ghost away, locals are said to leave coins by her grave as an apology. If you don't make a money offering, it's said that she will haunt you in the graveyard. If you're feeling light of coin, maybe just don't go into a cemetery at night. 
suggestion. Coming in at number 6 we have the Hell Tunnel. In Kingsport, Tennessee you can find the Sensbau Tunnel built by the Sensbau family and the government in order to allow traffic to pass. Legend has it that the tunnel was the scene of a grisly murder, the murder of none other than the daughter of the Sensbau family. It seems a robbery had gone very wrong and the intruder had stolen away a baby so that he was not shot at. He then dumped the baby in the tunnel and sadly it died. Now in the 1950s and 60s rumours of the hauntings were strong. There were even rumours that more people had been murdered there. Locals who lived near the tunnel warned people to stay away as the site has regularly been used for satanic rituals. Those who have been brave enough to venture through have said that they have heard a baby's cry and the shrieks of a woman. Coming into number 5 we have the body farm. Rumours have been circulating about a macabre scientific experiment in Knoxville, Tennessee. Locals wondered what a strip of private land was being used for with hearsay declaring it a body farm. Well, actually, apparently it's true. Owned by the University of Tennessee, it seems that the body farm is a place where dead bodies are studied in various environments to see how they decompose. Some are simply left on the ground to rot, some are submerged in water, some are left in hot rooms. It goes to help future forensic scientists understand crime scenes better. And I guess that's a good thing, but honestly, how ghoulish. Coming in at number 4 we have the Headless Signal Man. Chapel Hill is home to a very strange mystery indeed. It seems that the area, especially around the railroad track, is home to some weird unexplained lights. Legend has it that one night a man was walking home along the track, holding a lantern to light his way. For some reason he never heard the whistle and scream of the train as it came up behind him. Now the train driver tried to stop but it was too late, the man was mown down. The lamp he was holding was reportedly never found, but can be seen today as he watches each train go by. Other versions of the Story say that a headless signalman wanders up and down the track at night. Whatever the story, the lights are topic of frequent discussion amongst locals. Coming into number three, we have the cursed bride of Rotherwood Mansion. Rowena Ross's life was inexplicably plagued with tragedy. Despite being the daughter of a successful plantation owner and living in a mansion in Kingsport, she seemed to attract terrible luck. Like a lot of young girls, she fell in love, and actually, she was lucky enough to be loved back. Sadly, though, on the day of her wedding, her husband died in a freak boating accident. She married again, and he too died, this one of yellow fever. Fearful that she was cursed, she did marry a third time, but she was worried. Now, this time, her husband didn't die. But her only daughter did. Absolutely destroyed by grief and a strange sense of guilt, Rowena took her own life. People claim that she still haunts the mansion today and can be spotted wearing white, walking the halls sobbing. Coming into number two, we have the boy in the mirror. Pine Haven School is located in Jamestown, Tennessee, and is still a functioning elementary school. Beware though, there is a spooky tale attached to the school and an enduring urban legend of a ghost. The story goes that a group of bullies were terrorizing a young boy. Every day he would dread coming to school for fear of what they would do to him. One day they cornered him in a bathroom and shoved him hard into a mirror. Now the glass shattered and slashed his throat. The boys, bullies as they were, did not intend to murder him. They panicked and decided to bury his body under the school's floorboards, where he was eventually found. Now it seems that the spirit of the young boy still haunts the school today. If you're ever in the building, you should avoid looking in the mirror for too long as you may just see a sad little boy staring back at you. Finally, coming into number one, we have the legend of the Bell Witch. This is Tennessee's most famous urban legend and one of the most well known ghost stories in the state. The legend of the Bell Witch goes as follows. In 1817, a cruel presence began haunting John Bell and his family at their home in Robertson's County. They had lived on the property for 13 peaceful years, but it all changed. They began seeing strange animals, hearing knocking sounds, hearing chains being dragged and hearing weird guttural gurglings. This all went on for a year and John Bell finally confided in his neighbours. A committee was formed to investigate what TF was actually happening. It seems that the witch began communicating with the crowds that formed to see what was going on. Their energy seemed to feed her and spur her on. Indeed, many say they spoke to the witch. It seems she knew details of the past and future and she told those who asked that her goal was to kill kill John Bell and to make sure that his daughter did not marry a neighbour. John Bell died after a long illness in 1920 and eventually
eventually his daughter's marriage was called off. In 1821, declaring her work done for now, the witch said that she would leave for seven years and then return, which she did. She came back to talk with Belle's son, saying that there was a reason his dad had to die, but she never disclosed her motives. She then fled again, saying she'd be back in 107 years, which would have been in 1935. Now, it is undocumented whether or not she did come back, but people still talk about the legend today. Coming into number 10, we have the legend of the black eyed children. Forget the black eyed peas, meet the black eyed children. I've said it before, I'll say it again children ghosts creep me out. They're the worst kinds of ghosts. Kids are creepy, end of really, but kid ghosts! Ah. Apparently, there are some kind of creepy black eyed children stalking the streets of Abilene in Texas. The story comes from a local journalist, Brian Bethel, who said that in 1996 he was in the parking lot of a movie theater when he popped on his inner car light to write a check. Ah, 96 and checks. See, this wouldn't happen now. Two words e transfer. Wait, is that one word? Either way, I absolutely knew that archaic banking was a road to evil. Back to the story. <laughs> Noticing the light in his car, two kids came up to his window, which he rolled down to see what they wanted. Now the kids looked between 9 and 12 years old, and they asked him for a ride. He said that he had a very uneasy feeling about them, and after a while, he noticed that their eyes were totally black. He wound up his window and got the heck out of there, but his story was enough to go down in Abilene legend. Coming in at number 9 is Alien Blood. I actually read about this story a few years ago, and I didn't realise how much of a lasting impact it left on California, but evidently I guess it did. Back in 1984, at Riverside General Hospital, a woman called Gloria Ramirez was admitted to the ER to have her blood drawn. But as soon as it was drawn, the foulest smell filled the room and her skin started becoming oilier and oilier. Then like flies, the medical staff started dropping, half started passing out, while the other half lost complete control of their limbs. Five members ended up being hospitalised, and one even spent two weeks in intensive care. The weird occurrence affected over two dozen members of staff which left a skeleton crew to try and save her life. They failed and she died 40 minutes later. Until this day, no one has any idea what happened or what it was about her blood that took down 23 people. They dub it the legend of the alien blood that poisoned the hospital. And to me, I feel like science has a lot of answers for a lot of things, but when something comes up that they can't answer, and nearly 40 years later they still can't answer it, that's worrying. At number 8 we have the lady in white, because every urban legend video would not be complete without at least one ghostly lady wearing white. Hailed as one of the most famous Californian urban legends, the legend is about the thing that probably makes California famous, the Hollywood sign. The sign has been the backdrop of countless Instagrams and movies and is said to be haunted by Peg Entwistle, a famous actress from the early 1900s. That's so Hollywood isn't it, an actress haunting the sign? It came full circle almost. But anyway, the legend goes like this, after an excruciatingly harsh review of one of her movies, one people dubbed a career ending review, she decided she couldn't take the thought of her career ending and so she decided to end her life instead. She climbed to the top of the H in the sign and threw herself off of it. So based on that, many people claim a lady in white can be seen hiking in the off limits area near the sign around the place she killed herself. But if you find yourself up there and are hoping to see a beautiful actress, you'd be quite wrong. What appears is an eerie woman with hollowed out eyes and a skeletal face. If she finds you there alone, she can influence you to follow in her footsteps and end your life as well. In the century that followed her suicide, many suicide cases have been reported in the area, and in 2012, police even found a man's mutilated body parts and decapitated head right where she killed herself. Filling our number 7 slot is the prop of New Pike. So, so Elmer McCurdy was a famously notorious outlaw who died in the early 1900s. In 1911, his embalmed corpse became a sideshow act through Texas for people who wanted to come and gawk at the criminal and his displayed body, or rather his body travelled all over America, eventually landing itself in Long Beach, California. There his body was mistaken for a prop and was hung in a fun house at New Pike Amusement Park. The truth was only discovered in 1976 when a film crew tried to adjust him and ended up dislodging his arm. Imagine going into that fun house as a kid expecting mildly scary props and then coming face to face with a real corpse. I'd never go to an amusing park again, legit. 
Legit, I wouldn't. Now at number six is Old Stage Road. Now, Old Stage Road is located in Salmas and it's been the site of horrible deaths, gang related deaths, lynchings, and a Japanese concentration camp was even located there during the wartime. So, due to all that death, countless ghosts and spirits do haunt the road. But this specific story comes from Redditor Moonriver7811, who said his aunt told him a story of when she was young and pregnant. Her and her husband decided to take some back roads as a shortcut and ended up on Old Stage Road. She was looking out the window for a while and she suddenly saw a woman. The woman was keeping pace with the car and just turned her head to look at his aunt and what she saw scarred her for life. The skin of the woman was so pale, so pale it looked almost transparent. Her hair was like white hay, she seemed almost a hundred years old. But it wasn't even her appearance that freaked his aunt out, it was the hatred and anger she could see in her eyes. The uncle stepped on the gas and they managed to get rid of her. And the user decided after hearing the story he should also also go to the road as well with his friends at 3 a.m. drunk. The friends went there and stopped near Hangman's tree and decided to walk on the road, not stay inside the safety of their car. Very stupid mistake, kids. One of the friends decided to pee on the tree, douchebag move, and it's not surprising that that pissed off spirits after that. They got back into the car and were switching between CDs when they heard a loud get out on the radio. After hearing it and realizing it was none of them, they drove for their lives. Half a mile later, one of the friends in the back who had been asleep the whole time screamed saying she'd had the worst nightmare. She never remembered going back into the car and said she was walking down the street and turned around and saw that the car wasn't there anymore. All of a sudden an old lady with rotten teeth and claws tried to bite her and that's when she woke up. Despite the road being old as hell, murders still continue to happen on and around it. Coming in at number 5 is Bigfoot. It's like the most well known urban legend of all time, I'd argue it was maybe even the first one. But anyway, coming in second to Washington. California has the most reported Bigfoot sightings in the US. The creature, which is said to be a giant hairy human ape creature of sorts, is said to live in the wilderness. Yosemite National Park is said to be the most haunted national park in America because it was Bigfoot's first home. Campers have apparently seen it wander into their camps, to which of course they've screamed and ran away. The weirder part is that Bigfoot has been said to scream louder and run too, which, which is a bit cute, I'm not gonna lie. In 1962 on Mount Shasta, a woman claimed to have seen Bigfoot give birth, which A, I didn't even know it was a female, and B, now we have a mini Bigfoot on our hands. But I guess that was nearly 80 years ago, so it's probably adult Bigfoot now. Either way, I honestly feel like it's a harmless creature, so why don't we just leave the poor thing alone? It's not harming anyone. I mean, it hasn't harmed anyone yet. At number 4 are the Gates of Hell. A deserted road in Antioch called Empire Mine Road has a gate on its side that locals call the Gates of Hell. And at first glance, it honestly looks like a rundown graffitied gate, and most people wouldn't even notice it driving by but driving by won't do anything to you. It's crossing in the gates that could hurt you. The first legend about the gates is about an insane asylum that it used to be the entrance to. And it was one of those horror movie asylums, I'm talking straight jackets, lobotomies, shock treatments, the whole shebang. And because of that, many believe the ghosts of deceased patients stalk the area and some even suffer from the same illness that they had in real life. And the spirits around asylums are usually angrier than ones found elsewhere, and if you cross the gate, you could very well be attacked by one of the ghosts. One group of explorers felt rocks being pelted at them and when they got back into their car, they felt a giant creature leap onto the hood. The second legend is that it was a slaughterhouse that sat near the gates and that the spirits haunting it are of the animals. But the slaughterhouse was also home to a horrific murder that happened in 1995. A man came running and screaming out of the slaughterhouse, head to toe dripping in blood, claiming his girlfriend had stabbed him. Before medics could get to him, he died. So there is a lot of bad energy radiating around this gate. Filling our number 3 slot is the statue. A girl named Jessica was babysitting for a rich family in California, so you can well imagine that the house was massive with rooms upon rooms inside. During the night in question, the parents went out for a movie and so the dad told Jessica once the kids were asleep, she could go watch TV in the living room. And that wasn't a nice move so she could be entertained, it was so she wouldn't wander and snoop around the house. The kids go to bed and Jessica starts watching TV. I mean, she tries watching it but can't ignore the clown statue in the corner of the room. Even though she found the statue a bit out of place in line with the other decor, she let it go, but after a while it started freaking her out so much that she had to call the dad. She asked him if she could switch rooms because the clown statue was freaking her out. The father replied saying get the kids and leave the house and call the police. She started
not asking him why, but he told her to just shut up and do it now. She ended up getting the kids and going to the neighbors and calling the police. But she later ended up calling the dad. He said they didn't have a clown statue and that the children had been complaining of a clown watching them sleep, but they assumed it was just a nightmare. Listen to your kids, people. Listen to your kids. It's so funny. I've heard so many variations of this legend, but I had no idea it originated in California. Now at number two is the mass murder. Now this is an urban legend that circulates in California every year around Halloween. The legend has been around for decades, but it really only gained traction in the social media age. Yay for Twitter and mass murder. The legend starts with a photo from 1962 of a bunch of masked figures posing for what seems like a Halloween party picture. Everyone's in a white face mask, but the figure in the middle is in a black hooded one. Legend has it moments after the photo was taken, the black hooded figure locked all the doors to the party and then went and killed seven of the party members before escaping from the scene. No one has any idea who the man is and the only thing ever found about the case was the mask itself. Ugh, I just don't like people in masks on Halloween from way back when, like their masks were so scary. And these days dressing up for Halloween isn't scary, but back then it actually was. And finally, at number one are the witches. East Bay's Black Diamond Mines are one of the scariest places in California. At the end of the 1800s, early 1900s, the area was a thriving coal mining community and the people who lived there are still buried in the Rose Hill Cemetery. There are so many ghost stories surrounding the mines but the most popular one is a story of Sarah Norton and Mary. Sarah was a widow who married Noah Norton and it was widely known that she was a witch. One day her services were called for in the town of Clayton but on the way there she was thrown out of her buggy and killed. In life she was a very religious pious woman who emphasized how she didn't want a funeral yet the locals of Somerville felt she was owed one. The day of her funeral a terrible storm hit the town and it was delayed. The following day another storm hit but this time the town's livestock also came charging through it. The townspeople realized that this all could have been Sarah's spirit telling them she didn't want a funeral under any circumstances. Since then her ghost has been seen floating around town but mostly lurking in Rose Hill Cemetery. Now on to Mary. It was a very common name back then as you can well imagine so we don't know what her last name was but her occupation was being a nanny. But strangely enough every single child she cared for ended up dying and so the town accused her of witchcraft. And usually in these witchcraft cases an innocent person is accused but with Mary, they actually found evidence of her sorcery rituals. She was hung soon after and is said to be seen near the mines wearing full white. Honestly, what is it with ghosts and wearing white? Like, is it symbolism? What does it mean? Someone tell me. Mm -hmm.